Okay. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, this is a hybrid session. I've never done one. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so we are a big proponent of hybrid work, as you know, but I've never done a hybrid session. So apologies if something goes wrong or, you know, something doesn't work I think work it's out, an appropriate place to try technology like this. Yeah, huh? absolutely. So it's an appropriate place to <laughs> use technology and make it a hybrid one. So first question, Itlak and uh, Mayank, can you see us? Or are, are yes, we, we can uh, see you uh, uh, much larger than you would actually want to be seen. <laughs> <laughs> okay. okay, okay. So maybe, uh, Ajay, you and I can sit at two ends and yeah, it's yeah. going to be easy. So, <clears throat> so uh, you know, this discussion is a little different. I mean, we, we are normally used to the panel discussion format where, you know, it's more of a conversation. But uh, this is important because, you know, here is a real customer, a real project. We spoke about 18% success of projects in the previous session. Here is a project which has been immensely successful. The customer is vouching for it. The service provider is present here. And we want to learn from, you know, what went right in this project. What were the pitfalls? How was the journey? And how did these two entities, the customer and the partner, essentially come together to make it a success? Okay, so, so therefore, uh, this is real learnings, and I hope you will have a lot of take, you know, takeaways from this session. So first, uh, if Mayank and Iklak, uh, uh, question to you, if you want to just describe the problem statement, the business problem statement that you guys had when you started this journey, and what were you trying to solve for, if you could just help the audience understand that. Yeah, sure. Uh so we have around the first good afternoon to everyone, all of the audience. I can't see or hear you, uh, but a big uh, uh, hi from my side and a very good afternoon to all of you. Uh, we have around 1600 stores uh, in India, and all of these stores get uh, their entire supplies from our supply chain centers. Right? There are eight of them across India. So 1600 stores uh, uh, they, they get all 100%, so we do not buy anything from the open market. All of it comes from our supply chain centers. But these ingredients, whether it is cheese, capsicum, vegetable, chicken, paneer, whatever that might be, adds up to a list of 100 plus that are used in the, in the stores. Now these 100 plus ingredients, they need to be ordered or reordered at a predefined frequency back to the supply chain. So we want more cheese, more dough balls, more capsicum, so on and so forth. And all of these items have an expiry, they have a shelf life, they have a best use day, they like uh, the dough is best on a certain day. So there are many things that go into making a decision how much quantity should we reorder and restock at the same stock also into play. Now imagine a store manager that uh, the, in, in, the, in the front of uh, front office the attention is high. Even if you are managing 40% attention, there are people with you know one month of experience or three months of experience. They have to apply themselves and they have to decide how what quantity of these hundred plus ingredients do they need to order, and they need to order it in such a way that if they order more, there will be food wastage and our cost will increase. It will hit our profitability and it's bad for sustainability and the environment. If we order less, then we lose uh, revenue and then we lose orders and we lose customers. So the ordering needs to be right. And this was a, a completely manual process. And we said, what can we do to help our store managers reorder the stock, taking all these various factors into account, get it right in such a way so that there is minimal food wastage and minimal revenue loss. That's the problem statement. Great. Uh, Mayank, you want to add anything? No, I think it's not just the context and the problem really well. Okay, okay. So, problem statement clear, audience, you know, it's a classic supply chain problem. Uh, Over-ordering, under-ordering, you know, how do you match demand and how do you, in the food industry particularly, how do you, uh, you know, avoid wastage, right, which is a very critical uh, supply chain problem. Now, coming to the partner, so Nihilant uh, and Ajay, uh, my old friend, uh, what were the 
core strengths, what were the value proposition that you brought, both from a solution perspective and consulting capability perspective to this problem? Thanks. Uh, thank you very much. Thanks, Iklag and Mayank for joining online. Thank you very much. So, so we are at Newland, one of the, one of the things is that we are very strong in data science and data analytics, uh, you know, uh, deliveries. And that's one of our core strengths. And we build some IPs around this. And one of the IP we build is called Resense, is a platform where, if the name suggests Resense, we, are, we build the capabilities of sensing a uh, lot of factors which are different from the traditional uh, demand sensing models. Uh, traditional demand sensing models are largely driven by the internal data factors like, you know, your typical standard sales data uh, and various other things. Whereas we build capabilities where we can, uh, we feel especially in a business like food and, uh, and especially post-pandemic, a lot of new challenges came up in terms of demands were, demand variables were, were completely a different range of demand variables. And especially in food business like Domino's, uh, the demand variables are very, very dynamic. For example, India-Pakistan match uh, can change the demand completely. Uh, the weather can change the demand. Uh, COVID, of course, was a big driver. So there are many other external factors which are, which are, which can sense the demand. And we believe very clearly that the retail businesses like any retail business today should fo focus on demand driven model. Now for that, most important thing is sensing the demand accurately. I, and I think that was one of the challenge which Iqbal mentioned, uh, Iqbal mentioned is that, that sensing the accurate demand and then using that to calculate your ingredient requirement on a daily basis was the big challenge. And I think that's where the match came in. And, and, and that's how it all worked well. Yeah. So I want to deep dive a little bit on that in terms of especially, you know, capturing the external signals, which, as you say, it could be events, it could be weather, it could be other things. So any, any real examples that you, it could be Nihilant or Domino's who could share it. What are those specific, some of those examples that you've seen getting solved post this implementation, which maybe it was even difficult to predict? before the system came in? I think that Mayank will be in a good position to answer that because he un handles it every day. Sure, sir. Okay. Thanks for this. So, yes, uh, when we talk about demand, uh, and it almost typically has various hyper-local promotions, uh, it is specific to certain regions, uh, that is stores. So that was a challenge. I have the solution to incorporate that in the demand for us. No, which we have uh, getting to build and the office we are uh, finding uh, I said to which we can quantify that type of promotion and how we can take up the project to uh, work in that way. Uh, that's the number of people. Again, that's how this is working. Again, we have that how we can build it. I think, you know, we in, in our, but I can understand what we do during the project, which we learned was there were factors like, uh, which were not visible in the normal, you know, internal data, which cannot be easily visible. That there are, there are stores which behave differently because of the location they are in. For example, a store on a highway uh, behaves differently on a long weekend, and a store on a high street it's got different, you know, impact on, on, on weekdays and weekdays. Whereas a store in a mall behaves completely differently on a, on a Friday when there is a big a star or a movie being released in the mall, you know. So these are some of the patterns. Uh, I remember very clearly, uh, and Mayank, this was, uh, this was when we, in the beginning of the project, that there was one store we were struggling in the Punjab where we, we found that there's one particular, one particular weekend the sale has gone down to ze almost zero which is completely opposite to what used to happen on normal weekends. And when we investigated the matter, we found, because on that weekend there was a big uh, Gurdasman concert in that city, and the whole city was watching, went, went to see that, that concert, and nobody was ordered pizza that day, you know. So these are some of the external factors which we, we found were very critical to understand the demand. And these are some of the lessons also we learned. Yeah. And Ajay, I'm just curious to know a little bit, and just for the audience, you know, I'm sure some questions may be in their minds. So these kind of external uh, events or, you know, um, 
occasions. Some of them are predictable, some of them we don't know as even store operators or business uh, managers. So how much of this is like automated, how much of this is probably, you know, coming from, let's say, external signals in social media, or how do we really capture this whole universe and make sense of it to say what is really important for our business? Mayank, uh, Clark Mayank, you want to come on this? Yeah, and uh, before I answer the question, and the question is uh, how do you, where do these come from? Are, uh, are they, are they uh, internal inputs? Are they external inputs? Uh, and before I go there, I just want to highlight uh, a couple of things. First, we have had some fantastic outcomes as part of this project. Our startups have reduced by 40%. That's a huge, huge benefit out of this project. Our interstore transfers have reduced by 35%. Uh, another, another symptom of startup is one store tries to borrow from another store. And the third one is our forecast accuracy is also improved by uh, 40%. So there has been a significant jump in the outcomes that we wanted to influence which was start house and interstore transfers. Now, we, this has only been possible because DNN had a good platform that we talked about recent and they have put the right people who understand the domain and understand the business on board to build these algorithms and get the best out of the recent platform. I usually do not talk great things about partners uh, especially in public forums, a lot of partners out there who know that Amare uh, 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 but, but in this particular case, Niran has done a good job. Now, I am holding myself back from saying that they have done an excellent job because our journey is 50% complete. So, our forecast accuracy is only 74% despite having a 25% improvement. So, you can imagine what it was. Uh, before our interstock transfers or stock transfers are still at a level of 3%, uh, and we imagine what it was. So, we still have another 50% of the journey to go, uh, but we have the right partners, and uh, the rest of the 50% of the journey is going to come from these factors that have been spoken about the, the concert, the India Pakistan match, if we are running a campaign for. Uh, Independence Day, or we are running a campaign for the Wali, or there is like flooding in, uh, in, uh, in, uh, in Bangalore as, as the case now. And over a period of time, this kind of diminishing returns of marginal utility, as you get closer and closer to 90% or 95% accuracy, it will require more and more effort to improve the algorithm. But we have the right platform, we have the right partner. Uh, we are halfway through the journey and we are confident that using the platform and the partner uh, by providing some inputs, both external as well as uh, internal, we will be able to improve the uh, platform and its performance. No, great. Thank uh, you, Clark. Thank you very much. So, uh, let me come I to. I just want to ask one of my guests say uh, what I like working with the uh, of this project was uh, they talked about again this was trending mindset, right? They're not the executing the quarter. What I think is the scope of India, oh, to deliver that in the end of the day, but I talked to them. But you know, we have been coming up with several things to finance. What do you think this is? For example, the compound is an outcome that is a trend, right? So how do we uh, gain the means of the trend, right? And how do we provide the solution? How do we really underline the connection? Great. So, uh, tell us a little bit about the journey, you know, how did you plan? So, what are the pitfalls to look out for, for such a critical project? And what were probably, you know, they have a great platform, there's a great product out there, so great. But how do you make the project successful? Because the engagement itself means many more things other than the project, other than the product, right? So, what were some of those learnings along the way, if you could share with the audience? 
I, I would want to go first because there is a very important learning. This, this is one of the projects which is actually a benchmark within Jubilee as to how to you successfully execute your project. Okay? And the, the number one lesson from this, which I have alluded to, spoke about that again, is an agreement on the business KPI that is going to move as a result of this project. It's not about the statement of work, it's not about the scope of work, it is not about the 30 page document of CRs and, uh, uh, and uh, uh, what are we going to deliver, but it is simply the business, the partner and technology join together at the head that there are three KPIs we are going to uh, uh, impact forecast accuracy, stock outs and interstore transfers. So establishing that baseline, taking a target and being um, focused on improving those business KPIs rather than on a contract or statement of work has been the biggest factor behind this success. Apart from having the right platform, right partner, and apart from having a very high degree of business involvement uh, uh, in this, so Mayank and team, this is Bhagwa uh, all of these guys, the level of involvement that we had for business was outstanding. So was uh, 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 so was it for the partner. But none of this could have been a success had we not agreed on the business KPI that they would be back. Mm. Excellent. Anything else, Mayank, you want to add? You know, maybe uh, two more points. Uh, one is also around uh, how do we minimize the disruption in life of uh, store manager or our test to make manager that we call them. Because they are used to work in a certain manner, right? And they don't have uh, too much bandwidth uh, to work with complex systems, right? So, how do we replace our uh, legacy existing systems and make them more intelligent uh, or integrated with the platform that is there? So that all the intelligence is happening in the background and they are losing the old things in the agency. They are getting the inputs uh, at, at their required lifetime, uh, you know, they are getting the working location. So that disruption is going on. Uh, secondly, I would say, you know, such uh, analytics of machine uh, learning based projects obviously thrive on data. So uh, better input of data, the quality of data that we have. The more uh, fruitful outcome will be. Okay. So, that was the main point of, of this project that we had to take uh, our group last year. Great, great. Maybe uh, before I hand it to uh, back to again Ajay, uh, question to the audience just to check if you guys are listening in. So, how much was the interstore transfer uh, metric improvement? Anybody? Yeah. Yeah, so okay, everybody's listening in. So interests are worked up. How many of you think that this is worth trying out? It's quite exciting. This is a very complex case that you know they have solved. So how many of you think it's it's exciting to explore this more? Okay, good. So Ajay, what would you look at as future for this? This is quite novel. Uh, there's a very complex use case, complex industry in which you've solved for this. And in India, if you've been able to solve for this, which has its own uh, challenges. Uh, then, then you know, it's, it's really commendable. So what's the future for this now? So, yeah, as, as the clerk said, it's a job is only 50% done, you know. And I think, uh, you know, if, there are two things. One is expectation from our customers, and the second is our own roadmap with the platform. So I, as the baseline of this whole platform is data science, data analytics, you know. And, and the, the, there a lot can be done in this, you know. Our vision is that apart from... One is bringing as many as external factors possible. I mean, the things which Clark is expecting, there is a lot possible. We have just gone to a level of only integrating, for example, radio ads, TV ads, and we want to get into more promotional data, more uh, events data. And once there, we feel that there is a lot of improvement can be done. So leaving that aside, we are talking of also, currently we are using sales data. We are, if you move into the, for example, you know, Clark and my team has come up, that they also want to use the same platform for manpower planning now, you know. Uh, their business runs for almost 16 hours a day and, and there are two shifts. And especially the most critical part of their business is last mile delivery to the customer. And that's where you get the real satisfaction of the customer. How do you make sure? You may make, you may deliver, you may make the pizza in time, but you have to deliver it also to the customer, you know. That's where the, the customer gets the satisfaction. 
So how do you make sure that not only we are able to fulfill the ingredient requirement, but we also will be able to delivery requirement. So delivery teams are available. What right delivery teams are required at that time? So we are now, one is working on the next uh, manpower planning, number one. The second thing we want to move on to is, is the marketing uh, in angle of this. Instead of using just the sales data, we start using consumer data, the sales customer data, which so-called loyalty programs. Uh, they have just recently launched their uh, Domino's uh, new loyalty program. How do we use that to actually start becoming personalized uh, to every customer from the point of view of what their buying habits are, when they buy? Does Ajay Agarwal buy pizza every time there is a cricket match you know, happening? So if there is a cricket match, is he the, my possible customer? So can we get into that? And I think that is possible. We are talking of personalization at one-to-one -one level, not at the profile level. So we have a lot of new things which are lined up on the platform which we are planning to introduce and add into these capabilities. And I'm sure uh, uh, retailers will benefit from that. Yeah, Iklak, you're trying to say something? No, I think we are, we are on time. So excellent. Congratulations to both the teams. Uh, uh, very rarely you hear such a success story. So fortunate enough to moderate this and we heard this. Uh, all the best to both the teams for taking this forward. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks. Now the challenge will be to give a plaque to a clerk and Mayank, no? He will do. Yeah, we... we Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, uh, you. Mr. Iklak, Mr. Mayank, for joining us virtually. A huge round of applause for them. Thank you, Mr. Ajay and Mr. Subhajit. A wonderful, yet another insightful session. Yes, and is everybody with me? Yes, and I want everybody's hands up. Yes? A huge round of applause for them, everyone. Come on. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you.